Thank you for the invitation and thank you for this interview for Kath Mirini. I'd like to start with a question about, uh, about you as a leader of Albania. Um, you seem to many, uh, I, would la- I, would, I would say, as a, somebody like a literary hero, somebody coming out of a novel from Milan Kudera, for example. You are a bold artist, rebelling against communism, then living in Paris, then returning back and becoming the most successful politician of your generation. So indeed, you are the most successful PM of Albanian living memory, the only one that has got re-elected three times, and Albania GDP per person and GDP overall has increased 50% in the last 10 years uh, since you became a PM. So Albania never had it better, as Johnny Blair might say, who is a friend of yours. Uh, a few years ago, you had said in an interview for the Guardian newspaper that your aim is to place your country in a safe zone from the curse of history. Uh, have you succeeded? On September 10, it will be 10 years since you became Prime Minister. I'd like to tell us uh, something you are proud of and something perhaps you might regret. Uh, thank you for, for this uh, uh, charming introduction. Uh, but I would say, first of all, I don't feel a hero. And uh, this is what really I sincerely think. And uh, modesty is not my strength, so you have to believe me. I don't feel a hero. I have been born with some troublemaking spirit. Uh, I'm a very strange combination of... uh, uh, Catholic grandmother, Orthodox uh, grandfathers, then uh, atheist parents, and then uh, have been uh, blessed to be able to live uh, in two totally different worlds, isolated Albania, and now the free country that is trying to get things together. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm proud of many things we have succeeded to do. But uh, the reason I keep going is that I'm not happy. I'm not satisfied. I am a very uh, self-critical uh, person, although it doesn't look like, but believe me, I am. And uh, my harshest uh, judge, uh, or let's say the most harsh judge outside my house is myself. Then within my house, there is the harshest one, which is who is my wife. So uh, I'm pretty, uh, pretty uh, safe to not uh, kind of... uh, believe that I'm hero, that I'm doing miracle, and so on and so forth. No, we we have done a lot. We have started from, very, from a very bad place, and now we are in a better place, but there is still a lot to do. Many things to be done, certainly. Uh, Mr. Prime Minister, what a change in only five months regarding Albania and Greece. On March 21, you were in Zapion in Athens for the opening of your art exhibition alongside PM Mitsotakis and the then Foreign Secretary, Nikos Dendias. Uh, many artworks uh, that you presented at Zapion are paintings that you make during office hours, spontaneously, as I read. I'm tempted to ask if you have done paintings in recent months depicting the somewhat deterioration in the relations between our two countries. This was while I was uh, waiting for you. And uh, it's, still, okay. it's still a drawing. <laughs> But it will uh, it will uh, be colored, and uh, I'll try to color it in white, blue, red, and black. So uh, let's see what will come out, and if it's good, I will send it to you. Okay. I hope uh, I, I hope it. your editor I hope your editor will not think that uh, I corrupted you with that. So uh, <laughs> you can keep it up. And, uh, we can certainly publish it in the newspaper for all Greeks to to see it. Um, uh, Mr. Prime Minister, did you feel um, personally, personally offended that Mitsotakis uh, did not invite you in Athens in last Monday's informal dinner with the leaders of the West Balkans? Uh, of course, you replied on Twitter that he's invited in October in the Berlin Process Summit in Tirana. Um, 
And what else do you want to tell Prime Minister Mitsotakis? Listen, first of all, uh, I have learned uh, during all this uh, path in life that uh, feeling personally offended is not uh, a good uh, thing to live with. And uh, I never take it personally uh, when it comes to politics, when it comes to things that happen that uh, may not uh, please you or may not, uh, you know, may, may make you feel, you know, bad. Because at the end, you know, politics is uh, quite a dangerous beast. Uh, it can... It can bring you low and it can make you then say things that uh, you are not proud of. So, uh, no, I'm not personally offended. I simply would not do it. And I don't imagine being, you know, uh, in the same position to do something like that. And more than that i i think that the purpose of the of the meeting and the, the initiative kiriakos took is related to something very very big very very big so connecting this very big purpose and um, connecting this very important initiative to send a message to me to albania for what Whatever importance uh, Greek side uh, puts on this issue that we know very well uh, what is about, it's not this way, I guess, because I believe that especially when things that uh, are unpleasant happen between friends, friends have to face each other, to talk to each other, to try to understand, to honor the friendship by being very, very open and at the same time to never forget that they are friends. So uh, Kiriakos was a friend that I like and I I respect and he's still a friend that I like and respect. And uh, I hope this thing will be fixed. Uh, but even if not, Kiriakos will always be a friend that I like and respect. Then politics, as I said, can be a very bad influence and uh, can make you can make you do and uh, say things that uh, in the long way you realize that were not the right things in december 22 2022 you welcomed mitsotakis at dervitsani uh, village uh, Mitsotak after uh, a few hours after mitsotakis had campaigned with Belarus in himara had you ever talk to Mr. Dykes about your reservation against Belarus? No, no. And uh, I don't think he campaigned, really. I think he visited. And uh, it was his... Uh, was platform with Belarus. Yeah, but he can be with whomever he wants. I don't judge my friends uh, based on that. And... Uh, we were in Dervitsani, yes, and I was very happy to be with him. And uh, in the meantime, we are preparing the sculpture that will be put there to honor his late father, the Prime Minister Konstantinos Mitsotakis, who was the first and the last until Kyriakos came Prime Minister to come meet the Greek nationals in that area, and uh, so it's a it's an incredible, uh, incredibly important moment in the history of that community there. So I didn't order to stop the sculpture. I just uh, I'm waiting for the result, and uh, we want uh, it to be there uh, before the 28th of October. You have an important date, right, on the yes. 28th. Of October. So, uh, whomever may come from Greece to to visit there at that date will find Mitsotakis in the square, 
and the square is being now completely uh, fixed. Uh, we made a project, and um, you know, it's this is how I think uh, we honor um, this bond between Albanians and Greeks. Of course, not just this, but it is it is just a, a little example how how I think it should be. Do you mean we are uh, uh, you are going and to please, unveil and, the statue of Mitsudakis for October? And please stop, stop, just stop you and whomever is writing about this exhibition to blame to blame uh, Kyriakos or Nikos for having been uh, welcoming because uh, they welcomed uh, an artist, they welcomed. Um, a nice moment for art, for culture. And, uh, I've never written anything oh, against the exhibition of something. I, no, no, no. I'm, I just, you know, I can, I can tell you to stop. But because I understand. Nice uh, art. Understand, understand from my face yeah. that this is not, this is not addressed to you, but it's addressed to all of them, even some opposition guys that um, uh, stood up. And when I see how you fight in Greece between opposition and uh, government, I feel at home. It's very simple. <laughs> uh, but exactly. this, this is not a good idea to be mixed because they didn't, in my view, they did nothing wrong. And uh, on the contrary, you know, uh, the exhibition was, was beautiful and um, because the space is amazing. And uh, now I've... It was a great gesture. It was too, a, great, yeah. a great exhibition. It was an honor for us to, to have your paintings and sculptures in Athens. And I saw that your first exhibition was in Corfu in 1990. Uh, so on Wikipedia, was it correct? Corfu was the first place I landed as a free individual to travel. Because before that, uh, I've traveled. But I've traveled not as a free individual. I've traveled as a national basketball team player uh, when we had to play uh, abroad in in few occasions, and it was the only way to get out of the country. Mm -hmm. Then, uh, before the regime collapsed, but after the when this big big uh, thing happened with Albanians. Uh, uh, Albanians jumping uh, on the uh, on the walls of the foreign embassies to ask for political asylum, which was the first crack in the wall of the regime. Uh, they started to issue passports for traveling abroad uh, to people that had relatives abroad. And uh, my mother, who is from Vuno, Himara, by the way. Oh, Himara, uh, yes. Uh, we, by the way, uh, had uh, relatives in Corfu. So I went to Corfu and I remember that uh, when I arrived, our uh, relatives uh, welcomed us in their house and uh, I was asked what I wanted to do the day after, to go shopping or to have ice cream or to go to the beach. And... Uh, yeah, it was very attractive to have an ice cream or to go shopping. But I said, I want to go in the library and I want to see a priest. And they were like, library? Okay, we understand, but a priest? I said, uh, maybe you understand, maybe not. I want to see a library because it will be the first time in my life that I can see in a library, in a bookshop, all the authors that I can touch, I can take out of the shelves, I can look, and they are free. Because in Albania, mostly of them were not, were not free. They were banned. So looking at Plato or at uh, Socrates or at uh, Aristotle or at Kant or at all the authors, Proust and Kafka and all this, just like free for me was a big event in my life. And then... I said, uh, I want to see a priest. I never saw a priest in my life because the religion was forbidden in Albania. And I just wanted to see a priest, just to look into him, just to, to, to feel how a priest looks. And uh, the added value was that the priest had a long beard, you know, not yeah. no, longer than mine, but white as mine. 
and it was uh, you will laugh now but it's not a joke it was the first beard i saw in my life because until 1990 beard was forbidden in albania oh yeah yes beard long hairs were forbidden right mustache was a was a statement that uh, only very very unsuspected people could have like old guys writers or or, or in, in this end or old uh, heroes from the war or old uh, men in the villages but not us and not the young so uh and by the way i gonna i'm gonna tell you and this is not a joke that and this was because the influence of the chinese uh, cultural revolution we uh, had in the in the airport of albania which had, at the time had very few flights albania had few thousands of tourists and they were all mostly marxist leninist groups coming to have their holidays here and in the airport was a barber shop and every tourist that had a beard or had a long had a beard or had long hair said to go to the barber shop to take Shame. off the beard and to take off their soul Karl Marx couldn't enter Marxist <laughs> Marxist Albania without shaving well and cutting his hairs. So this is why I was in Corfu. And then yes, I uh, I bought I bought some paint, I bought some paper, and I started to do to do paintings uh, at the balcony of this beautiful house of uh, our relatives. And then uh, I got in contact with someone that uh, I never met again, uh, an artist from painter from Corfu named Spiros Sorginos. And he liked, and then he said, why we don't do an exhibition? And I said, wow, fantastic. And so we, uh, we did an exhibition. I did an exhibition then in winter, in December, in the, in the uh, exhibition hall of the Corfu Theater. And this was my first exhibition abroad. First, first exhibition, right? Very, very, very interesting story. So let's get to the thorny issue, which is the Baleri issues. My first question about this affair is: Why did you choose to attack personally a mayoral candidate? You told him, you told about him, you called him illiterate, a scam, an ugly face that will scare. There's the seal of the unwanted. So you, you are, of course, the PM, and uh, taking into consideration your institutional role and position, um, was your intervention something like tantamount to a call to the institutions, police or judiciary, to single out or to target this candidate? Okay, uh, thank you for the question. First of all, as I said, you know, sometimes in politics, uh, you may say things you are not proud of. Uh, then and uh, uh, in this campaign, uh, yes, I said some things that uh, you know I I don't really feel well, uh, but I don't feel well uh, because uh, then this was related to what happened, which has no relation, no relation. The reason why I. I was harsh on him was because he made some very, very uh, unacceptable statements. Like uh, he would uh, bring forward the stopped process of Hellenization of Imara. You know, this is not something you say in, in Europe, in this Europe. Uh, this comes from very long, dark past. And then, of course, you know, uh, other stuff that was not really good. Uh, you know, speaking like he was there to liberate Imara. I don't know from whom. Uh, we can talk about that. But I'm, I'm, I'm asking you a rhetorical question. If I was aware that there was an investigation, uh, started by a denunciation of someone and then launched by the prosecutor. Uh, would I expose myself in this frank language? If I would know 
that he would be arrested. Would I be, you know, exposed in this frank language? I don't think so, because I may not may not be the most intelligent person on on the on earth, but I'm not also the most stupid person on earth, and this would be very stupid. So uh, I learned about his arrest when uh, the when the police was in action. And uh, I just called the director of police and said, what is this? He said, we have a, we have a arrest uh, warrant from the prosecutor and uh, it's based on hard evidence of vote buying. I said, listen, you better be sure what you are doing because this can be very nasty. And this has to be based on hard evidence, but I wish you luck because it was not something I was involved. The action was already happening. So then you ask the next question. Yes, uh, there is a possibility, and I'd like to discuss it with you, that uh, with both countries, we lost uh, somewhat in translation regarding the Hellenization. Uh, friends of Belarus and other people in Greece, they insist that he never talk about Hellenization. He talk about, in Greek, Hellenismos is the Hellenes, the Greeks. He, he told to the people there that his victory would be good for Hellenismos, for the people living in Himara. Hellenismos is the people who are living in Canada, in Australia, and everywhere. ex means Hellenization, this ex Hellenismos, ex Hellenismos. So I saw a documentary on top channel of Albania with the English subtitles, uh, where the journalist said that Belarus gave an interview to a Greek website, Protothema, where he called for ex Hellenismos, for Hellenization, but he never called for that. Uh, the interview uh, in the interview, he was calling for uh, Elinis Moss to be better with him as mayor. Uh, uh, and perhaps there is this difference in translation. Listen, it's, it's, listen, at the end, you know, it's not just this. And overall, whatever a guy represents, which uh, is the total totally different view of the world the, with 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 me and uh, with uh, us because we were opposing uh, each other in the campaign it has nothing to do with what happened this i can guarantee you and i have my word and i can give you a lot of reasons why you have to believe my word so um, beyond the politics of it and beyond uh, not just this it's not a word it's an it's a whole activity is a whole many things but it does until there we are in politics so this is politics but what happened next is not politics it's rule of law and it's uh it has to do with our institutions and uh, we can discuss about that yes because i know you you think the contrary and uh, we have to face facts I observe and you observe you and I'm listening to you very carefully, but I think that uh, uh, I would like to give you the um, picture of the affair as it is seen from Athens. Let me explain let, let me explain to you why Athens is disappointed by you. So uh, uh, we all accept that you are a leader of reforms. Your judicial reforms are impressive, especially the vetting process. Um, only a few countries have dared to do something like that. But still, the problem in the court seems uh, persistent. Uh, according to my sources in Athens, the handling of Belarus affair by Albanian institutions uh, threatened Albanian's reputation in the EU because, for three reasons. First, uh, we know that Belarus was not arrested at the scene of the alleged crime, the second is that he is denied a special leave to take the oath of office. 
Mm. And the third is that he is still detained, although he cannot commit the same alleged crime again. I mean, there are no elections to be influenced. The witness examination has been completed, so he cannot interfere with it. And he's an elected mayor, so why escape abroad? Um, therefore, Athens says that we have a wrong arrest, a wrong detention, and a wrong denial of someone's rights. That's why Athens has taken this position against the issue. I understand, I understand, uh, but I don't agree. I don't agree in any of it. And first of all, I don't agree that a uh, foreign country, a foreign government, uh, makes uh, thorough comments about the justice system action of another country, even being very friendly countries. And uh, this, I think, is not European, in my view. So, and then, first, he was based on what we know, because we don't know everything. We'll know everything when uh, the special prosecutor will present the, the full evidence in front of the you know, courtroom. And we are not yet there. Uh, but based on what we know, he was caught in flagrante. So he was caught in action of vote buying with, of course, his network of vote buying. Secondly, uh, the leave, because this is a, this is now the focus. So, uh, the leave to the right to leave and to take the oath. First of all, in this second point, in nowhere exists in the Albanian jurisdiction the power of the government or of the prime minister to issue a permission for a pre-trial pre detainee to leave jail. This does not exist. And on the other hand, uh, he, his lawyers, him, whomever, had to go through the court to ask this thing, which I might tell you, it doesn't exist in the Albanian legislation. There is not such a thing like someone uh, getting a permission to have an oath while he's pre-trial uh, for a crime uh, uh, in flagrante. And uh, the court has already refused it. Third, um, you said your third point, if uh, I am not wrong, was uh, detaining an elected, an electing, elected mayor, right? Yes. Uh, yes. He, He's detained. Well, he cannot commit the same crime again. Yes, but uh, the point is that um, based on what we can understand from what has happened, in terms of the process, he is detained because in three levels of the judiciary of the Republic of Albania, first appeal and then the high court, he couldn't get released. So my question is very simple. Where am I and where is the government of Albania in this? Now, I give you a little background. Uh, this system, meaning special prosecution, special prosecutor office on uh, against organized crime, cor corruption and organized crime, special court against corruption and organized crime, has been created as as the, the implementation of a justice reform that from A to Z was conceived, was written, was approved and has started to be implemented under the strict monitoring of the European Union. 
and with the full support of the United States and the European Union, Greece included. And this, these bodies have pre-trialed jail, if I'm not wrong, kind of four, four or five of mayors from the Socialist Party of Albania. Three days before the campaign started, a mayor of the Socialist Party of Albania, who was the candidate, was arrested and pre-trialed. And I'm not sure that yet since then he has been indicted in front of the court. They were incumbent mayors. They were incumbent, already mayors. Incumbent, yeah, but incumbent. I'm saying to you, no, I'm saying all this. They were trying to tell you the crimes they did during their tenure as mayors. No, no, no. But I'm saying you all this because I want you to realize that these structures are completely independent from every influence and from every possible interference of myself and the government. And this is a commitment we have made. And I challenge yes, you if you find a single comment, if you find a single comment of mine, mine, I'm the Prime Minister of Albania, I'm not the Prime Minister of Greece, I'm the Prime Minister of Albania, and I have never commented on actions of these new institutions and this does not mean that I'm happy with all the actions or that I have not some uh, some ideas of mine about one action or the other. So I've said to my party, I've said to the people, this will be painful, this will not be perfect. We are building from scratch a judiciary in Albania that never existed before, never before in the Albanian history, not just in this part of history, but since the, we have an Albanian state, there is no case where one person related to the to the pa power, being monarchy, being uh, communist dictatorship, being a democratically elected government, has gone to jail. No one. There is not one case. Today, we have we have I don't know. I've lost the count, and we'll keep going. So now, it's it perfect? Nothing is perfect, and this is not perfect. Do I have some some um, concerns, or do I have uh, my own opinion, which may differ in one way or the other, in one case or the other? Maybe, but this is what we have to do. We have to endure the pain. We have to endure the imperfection, and we have to keep going because this is a moment in history that we are trying something we never tried, and when was tried not like this but in a much minor way it was just watered down because you know it's not easy to have an independent judiciary in a country where we are all cousins if we dig we are all cousins so you know something about it because although greece is bigger still you know we are the same people we have uh, same tribal uh, tribal connections family is important cousins are important neighbors are important people that know people are important but, you know, we have to build it. And uh, I brought this to you as a background of our conversation because, uh, and, you know, until now, there are other people in this country that have done terrible things. They are not from a party. They are not from, uh, from uh, who, who is today in government. And they are still untouched. We have to wait. We have to be patient. We have to see. So it's a build up. Do you think that there is a different, uh, different place and uh, it should be a different ju uh, justice and should be a different treatment for someone who is a uh, Greek national? Yes. Yes, at all. But, but who is an Albanian citizen? And who has to, uh, to obey to, 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 to the law and who has to go through the same thing? So, uh you know this is my answer there, there is no and, and and you know i know that uh i know that uh you know facts sometimes are not enough okay because when someone 
is fixed on an idea he it's keeps going safe. but but yeah. there is one thing there is one thing I have to underline and I think our civilization the 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 world we believe in has solved it since Rome it's the burden of the accuser to give the proofs and not of the accused now I am being accused and it's not my burden to bring the proofs I try to bring arguments but I have not seen any proof any proof that would uh, would, would, would somehow uh, support the the arguments that this is Eddie Rama that is doing this and he is he's standing uh, stubborn and he's standing uh, you know uh, unwavering because uh, he is uh, this and he is that you know uh, there have been uh, there have been comments in Greece that I regret you know that even you know he is the tail of Erdogan and he is doing Erdogan listen this is too much and it doesn't honor Greece it doesn't honor Greek journalism it doesn't honor Greek politics and uh, I would ask you about uh, President Erdogan I, this is my yeah, you ask me but it, you know I'm we, it's a free free talk and then of course you'll make your you'll you'll make your you know you'll do your job to edit and then uh, you'll publish but now I'm talking to you okay so yes absolutely we talk together right now I have another uh, two questions about uh, especially Valerius and uh, one of them is that uh, in Athens, the Greek government has pointed out that the Belarus is the only one that is held for this specific crime in Albania. I mean, the punishment is disproportionate for al almost 300 euros. Uh, there were another 31 incidents of bribing in the same day, in the same election day in May, but everybody is free. Uh, and for uh, for candidates to bribe uh, citizens to vote for them, 31 incidents. And uh, the, the 30 of them are free, and only one uh, candidate who is accused of an alleged crime like that is in prison. That's what, it's another uh, detail of the, uh, uh, that I we hear. talk about in Athens. I hear you, and uh, my answer is very simple. First of all, nor the arrest and the imprisonment of uh, the one, and either the letting go of the others, has to do with the government or with me. But what can I say to you is, because I have heard this argument and I have just asked to... to, to, to Your official. To yes. And so, so the thing is that this, is, this has been happening on the spot. The other cases are denunciations of others. And there are no candidates. There is no single candidate or incumbent that has been caught doing so and is uh, running free. There are people about whom there are allegations based on a video, based on a voice message, based on something. And these are all things under investigation. But, you know, it's not yet there. So uh, it, the, the comparison does not really stand. Yes, um, if I may, I uh, will tell you that... Uh, you may, of course. Yes, that, uh, according to our information, and according to a video that was posted on Facebook, Belarus was arrested. He was in a different restaurant from where the alleged crime was committed by uh, somebody who worked for him. He was in a different restaurant, talking with his uh, cousin and a lawyer, and uh, then he was arrested because uh, somebody working for him was first arrested uh, half an hour before or one hour before in a different restaurant, Gelateria, uh, allegedly giving money. So he was not uh, the lawyers of Belaris, say, and they say that the, the documents or the court documents uh, depict and say that Belaris was not at the scene of the crime. But... Uh, I'd like to move forward. Uh, Athens. Asks... Oh, let me let me let me yes. let me say something here. First of all, uh, we nobody knows except the prosecutors well, the, the full evidence because this has not been public. The full evidence is uh, is still under the secret of investigation until the moment that they sit in the court of law and they put it in front of the judge. So when this will happen? Then this is a public uh, knowledge uh, thing, 
And everyone then can judge if there is all of it, or if there's part of it, or if it's good, or if it's bad, which I don't know, sir. I don't know. I just respond based on what I know. And what I don't know, I don't know. And if uh, there is no evidence, and if this is all uh, a scum, we'll know. And then we can, again, discuss. But guess what? I'll not comment, because I never comment what these new institutions do. And trust me, sometimes I want to comment, but I, 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 I retain myself. And there is no one in my government, there is no one in my party that makes comments about uh, justice uh, decisions, especially about this part, because we uh, the reform has to go on with the uh, with the prosecutor offices in every county with things that. But this part is absolutely a no go for us uh, because we want to support these institutions, we want to support this reform, and we are somehow you know. We have to pay the price for it, uh, being uh, when we see people of our own party arrested and being when we have things to say and we shut our mouth. This is how we serve this. Otherwise, this can blow again, because if this becomes a political thing, then this can blow again. And the, and the prosecutors and the judges will not feel any more supported <clears throat> and will not feel any more doing their job. <clears throat> so the, the only government interference in this in the since the 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 just reform has taken its course is the interference from the greek government from the Albanian government there is no interference athens asked from tirana to let Belarus take the oath of office and uh there is an option uh, are you prepared to support politically the option of him taking the oath of office inside the prison in the presence of a notary Listen, uh, it's very interesting. Uh, Athens asked Tirana. Who is Tirana in this case? You the know. Prime Minister. Tirana is not the Prime Minister. The Prime Minister is uh, sitting here, and I'm in the center of Tirana, I can confirm. But my power is totally separated from the power of them who should be asked they have been asked, and they've said no. Meaning, they've been asked through the process, and they've said no. On the other hand, if you find me a line in our law that opens the slightest window for taking an oath in prison with a notary, then let's discuss. There is not such a thing. There, there is, is a very there is a precedent there is a, in Tirana. Legal experts in Athens don't know that there is a precedent in Tirana when on November 14th, 2019, Arta Vorpsi, the constitutional court judge, overcame Ilir Meta's resistance to accept her by taking the oath of office in the presence of a notary. Uh, listen, first of all, uh, she was a free person that uh, had this idea to do this and there were some people that said this is uh, this is possible and then this was refused secondly we're talking about someone that is jailed for a crime we're not talking about someone making an experiment and so the crime the, not been so what she did what she did in that case was her own opinion and uh, her own action and she did so it didn't work but in this in, in the case we are talking is about we are talking about uh detainee we're talking about someone that's in jail and when it comes to the oath in office of a mayor the law is very specific the oath is taken in front of the city council and in the presence of the prefect or whatever so there is not such a thing like taking the oath of office in front of a notary. It's it's not in our law. So, Prime Minister, are and, we going to... and again and again, this is what we are talking. So you say something, I say something. But at the end, there is only one place where this can be decided: is the court of law. And the court of law said no. So 
what we are talking about. And then... Uh, the head of the prison is not member of the court of law. But the head of the prison has not such a right to give a permission because the head of the prison can give permission not to pre-trial detainees. It doesn't exist. A pre-trial detainee cannot be given a permission by the head of the prison, but only if he asks and he, he, he retains it in case in a court of law. In a court of law. When, okay. When, when you are a detainee and you have finished with trials and you are there and there is a, there is a, God forbid, uh, you know, someone passing away uh, in the family. You ask a permission and you can get it based on conduct and so on. And this is what the director can do. But the director cannot give a permission that for a pretrial detainee to take the oath in, off in office while this is completely out of our legislation. Right. So, Prime Minister, are you going to call for new elections for Himara? Here you, you might get a scoop, maybe. I don't know. I'm not sure happy. that you should get it. I'm happy to get a scoop, certainly. I'm not, I'm not sure you should get it, because I'm not sure yet how it goes. But first of all, it's not, it's not, it's not us. It's not the government that, in Albania, it's not the government that called for new elections. Uh, uh, it's the president called for new elections. But how the process goes, uh, it is like that. Uh, if, in our law, if someone that is elected does not show up for the oath, for whatever reason, it's not defined, but does not show up for the oath in 90 days, then it's up to the government to take care by discharging the person and by putting their uh, caretaker until new elections happen and the new elections are declared by the president. I've asked my, my, my lawyers to prepare, to prepare an argument and I don't know what their argument will be, but I think that this, this case is such particular, there is no precedent for it, there is no, you know, because nobody when they made the law thought about this situation. So uh, my instinct or my, my natural reaction is that we maybe have to wait for the trial. So to not until until he is proven guilty or not guilty. But this is not a legal opinion. This is just what I think we should uh, do based on uh, on the fact that we don't have really a, a precedent, and uh, we, we, you know, this is open for for this. Then would be open for many interpretations. So I have to ask the legal office, but I think that we may go both ways. May, this, this would be the right answer. We may go both ways based on uh, on the argumentation of our legal office. So right. maybe let maybe we it. act. Let mm -hmm. me make it. Let me make it more clear. Uh, you meant that you politically support the idea that Belarus should continue to be uh, an elected mayor until his trial. That's what you yes. said before, if I got it right. Not, it's not even politically. It's just, it's just you know, because right. in, this, in this table, you have to make decisions. You know? Yes. In your table, in your table, you have to comment decisions. <laughs> so, uh, it's more so easy. when it comes to so in this table, you you have to make decisions, and then there are many things that you have to 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 to, to go through, and then to understand. But in this case, of course, uh, we we are we have to look to the to the legal legal opinion. So that's the. I think I think that re that there is a possibility uh, that uh, uh, we don't act 
until the court will decide. Okay. To, so in this case, we give to everyone the chance okay. to look into it until the end, if it's possible. If legally this is not possible, then we have to discharge it. It can go both ways. And when are you going to decide about that? No, no, we are, uh, we are, uh, and, and, and I know that there is another thing being uh, interpreted when the counting starts, the, ca the counting starts, okay? So it, so what you take like the day to count. And I see now that because these guys run to come to Himara to make the most unique protest in the history of Europe, some guys elected in another country coming to protest here against the authorities of this country is uh, it's unique. You know, it's like... It's not it's unique, like, Mr. Prime Minister. They did the same in Constantinople for Imamoglu. Uh, 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 Kostas Bakoyanis, the mayor of Athens, went to Constantinople, Istanbul, to protest uh, in, in support for uh, a Krem Imamoglu, the mayor no, of... Uh, this is something... No, no, no. This is something else. This is something else. It's not the same thing. Uh, but anyhow, uh, you know, maybe it's a, it's a, it's a, it, it comes from ancient Greece. I don't know. Maybe you know better. I don't know. But uh, maybe it's a, it's a genuinely Greek thing. Uh, I'm not, I'm not accustomed to it. But uh, what I want to say is that uh, the counting now, the, now we are even not, not being in the same page for the counting. So we'll let it go. So we will not. Uh, entering the counting. So we'll let it go and then we'll take our decision. It can go both ways. Yes. Uh, it can go both ways. Well, um, I read on your biographical details and you told me before first that your mother is from Vuno, a village in Himara region. Mm -hmm. Do you feel a native of Himara a bit? A native of Himara? Yes, you personally. Listen, in Albania, I don't know if in Greece you have uh, a say that uh, a man is always uh, coming from the village of his wife. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is said in Greece. <laughs> you have it, yes. So, uh, I was born in Tirana. My wife was born in Tirana, so I feel native of Tirana. But yes, I I have a very, very strong bond with uh, with Imara, with Vuno, and uh, my... I have a strong bond. Very strong bond, very, very strong bond. Oh, and, it's uh, an opportunity. My mother was a very, my mother was a very typical Vunyotsia, and uh, uh, for Vuno, uh, there is a say, you know, their normal fever is 38, so uh, I love it. You said Vunyotsia, you know Greek? No, I don't know Greek. My brother knows more. He learned, he learned some when he was in Corfu. And I really regret that I am not able to speak this language because it's, it, it, to me it sounds a beautiful language and then it's the language of great people. Right. So, uh, as you feel strongly about Himara, do you have any message for the Greek minority living in Himara to give in this interview? I have no message to give to them. I think that uh, whomever in Himara or in all the Greek... Uh, uh, minority uh, being living uh, wherever uh, they know very well that uh, if they are not poisoned by politics they know very well that uh, they live in this country totally equal with Albanians uh, with the goods and the bad with the problems and uh, the good things so they, I don't know yet maybe you can help me a single problem that you can find for the Greeks here, and it's just for the Greeks. I don't know a single one. If you tell me and, one, yes, I told, any. I told you, I didn't, I didn't know too, but I was told that uh, there is still a problem regarding the property rights of citizens of Kimara, and it is said in Athens. It is said that property titles are given to citizens of Himara, only if they have already agreed to sell them to big strategic investors. So in the 10 years you govern Albania, and three years after the parliament approved uh, the new law on properties, 
Um, do you know perhaps how many ownership titles have been given to Himalaya residents without these residents having sold them immediately? These first properties. Of all, first, of, first, of all, first of all, this is a total total uh, spin because the property the property title history of Albania is very painful, very painful. Uh, we had to go through the hell of full nationalization. And then we had to go through the purgatory of a, a so-called transition where the property titles were the first big victim, a big mess, a big mess in every kilometer square of the country. So uh, you sp I'm telling you that we have still issues, big issues in the north, huge properties. Uh, where there are needs for development, there are needs for for getting uh, funds, there are needs for getting subsidies, and they cannot register still today. And that's why we had to pass this law first. Second, uh, it's, you know, to say that they are recognize their property uh, af only after they make the deals uh, with whomever, this is a total, it, this is not, it's not logic, because there is no deal that you can make uh, with uh, institutions, there is no permission you can get if you don't have the titles. So you need to have the titles. And I've heard this piece of bread story, and this is crazy. You know how much the land is sold in Imara, and it's not, it's not, it's the people they're selling, and they, they sell the land based on papers uh, they have, and, or based on, on, on some very old papers that are, I mean, of, of communist time, that are like uh, not even titles of property, but they are owners and they sell. And uh, we have today, I'm telling you, in Imara, a uh, situation where property is sold much higher than in a lot of parts of Corfu. I I was uh, told by someone that is uh, working there uh, and is building there. He's not from Imara. He said to me, I have bought the properties three times because I didn't want anyone, anyone, anyone to be like I was left aside. And they have problems with each other because of the overlapping, because different papers, because different. And I bought them three times, he said. And uh, secondly, he said, and he showed me, he showed me, uh, I'm, I'm now working to buy a property in Corfu. And it's 10 times less than what I bought in Imara. One time. So in Imara today, the average, the average price, guess how much it is? 400 euro, 500 euro, meter square. I, I'm talking about where the beach is. I'm not talking about the mountains, right? So it can go to 1,000 sometimes. And, and it's quite a good transaction uh, in, in uh, parentheses because uh, it's mostly not a transparent transaction. So a lot of money goes to the people. Uh, without being declared rightly, and this is the problem we don't have in Imara only we have everywhere. So it's uh, we are we have made a major cleanup of the of the titles of property, but still there is a lot to do because there is a lot of bad things have happened in the past. Yes. Before, uh, let me tell you another thing. Uh, you know, uh, the titles of properties given to the Greek minority. Uh, in during my tenure are countless compare them with what happened before zero zero not one zero the greek the the, the greek minority today can go to churches that are with titles of property and churches did not have titles of property since communism ripped them off from the titles. And my government gave churches the titles. 
So the and, and and you know what is and, and you know I had a conversation with uh, the association. They they are called um, uh, the Association of Himariotons or something in America. They were very vocal because they have their their roots in Imara. They are well organized and so on, and they were very vocal and they were very uh, strongly uh, opposing. Uh, me based on words. And I went to New York and I sat with them and I said, listen, uh, don't talk to me. Don't listen to me. Of course, I'm, I'll, I'll build my case based on what is best for me. So send there a team, send them a team of lawyers and let them interview everyone they, they want let them go to the to the spot let, let them talk to the institutions let them get the facts and then if what you say is as you say it and is not as i say it i'm ready to be punished i mean punished in a way like the biggest liar and one of the guys a very wise guy said to me listen i never thought that I would meet and break bread with Eddie Ram. This is just, this is already something huge. And now I'm telling you, if you are, you are manipulating us, I'll be after you all your life. In a Greek way, of course, not, uh, and uh, not in the terrorist way. And, uh, but if you, if you, are telling me the truth, you'll be my friend for life. And we are friends for life today. Yeah. Right. So, uh, facts, and, and, and be careful. I'm not saying this is all, this is all like, uh, uh, I would say water of roses. I'm not saying that they have no problems. I'm not saying that, but I'm telling you the problems of property in all the shores of Albania from up in Škodra to down in uh, Konispol are the same, are the same. The trouble is that some people that seem to be more intelligent than others know how to use the Greek flag, you know, as a credit card, know to use the Greek flag as a way to fuel, to fuel poison and to fuel and know to use also their very petty interests by using the Greek flag. It's something we every people do, uh, but for Albanians, they do it by using the Socialist Party flag or the or the Democratic Party flag or, or other party flags because uh, you know they cannot claim that they are a minority here being uh, being devastated or a member of minority being ripped off. When it comes to, to, to some people in the Greek minority, they are very good uh, in manipulating Athens, and Athens is not good in understanding that uh, the best the best uh, the best chance uh, they have for for improving the relations and uh, improving the life of Greek minority is not a Greek. It's just me, and it's me because, not because I am, uh, you know, I'm working for Greeks. I'm working for everyone, and I think that uh, the Greeks in Albania are a treasure, and we have to treasure their presence. That's it. But you know, as there are some Albanians that uh, I'm not really happy to share with them the same the same blood. There are some Greeks that. Really, you know, you should you should not be very proud of sharing the same blood. Uh, the uh, you talk about manipulation. Uh, uh, the story that uh, uh, members of the government have been supporting special interests in Kimara is also a manipulation, and I refer to the. Tell me. I refer to the story of Artan Gazi, the husband of the foreign secretary Olta Chaska, who is the owner of HDCC Hotel Management. And yeah. it has been designated as a strategic investor. It has been a whole talk in the parliament and in the yeah. Supreme Court, I think. 
And what's your comment on, on that? Because it has been referred as a way of the government. Listen, if, especially in yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, if talks in parliament would be would be uh, proofs, then you should not talk to me. You should just uh, you should just inform the police where I am, <laughs> and you, you should keep me here until police come. So. Uh, uh, I don't say that you support uh, this, and I don't. No, no, no. I don't no, no, no. if it is. Uh, no, 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 I, no, no. no I, I'm saying, perfectly legal. No, no, no. No, no, I'm saying if if the talks in Parliament mm -hmm. become a reason to to go, go after people, you should come after me because I'm the most dangerous, the most crooked, the most uh, bad guy based on the talks in Parliament, but. What is the truth of that, and why this? How this became like big? Big issue, yes. Every I'm telling you, every and what is at the end the strategic investing? The strategic investing is a tool to simply guarantee, and guarantee by not by money, but simply guarantee uh, by some incentives, investors in strategic sectors. And for us, tourism is a strategic sector, as this tool has been used because we were very, very behind. We didn't have a hotel, you know, a hotel that was is dignif it's, it deserves its name. So, strategic investors are strategic investor is a title you get after you have every everything settled between yourself and uh, and uh, the landowners and you present the plan and you present the project and so on now and this is the project like many projects in our shores of uh, of hotel and residence typical of countries like ours and every hotel in albania that is in the seafront gets a permission to use the beach every hotel so the permission that was given is one or among thousands and thousands and thousands of permissions from Adriatic to the to the to Conis Poly. And the and the question was not raised by owners that were ripped off, because the owners there have made their deal and are happy with the deal as every owner, because if, if an owner has, is not happy with the deal, he doesn't make the deal, or if the owner is ripped off, then the owner goes to the court, goes to the media and so on. There is not such a thing. Now, the quest, my question is simple. What do these people want? They want people that live in Imara, that have the properties, that, to develop their land or to stay there like Robinson Crusoe? I, uh, this is the question. Because if they develop their land based on the plans, of course, they get money. They get money. They get a lot of money. A lot of money. So uh, this is underestimating a lot the intelligence and the capacity of the people in Albania, being Albanian nationals, being Greek nationals, to take care of their own of their own business, so they take care, they take good care of their business. Trust me, and uh, there is not such a thing like we want to do what to do what in Imara to do what we want to develop Imara to develop every part of the country based on the law, based on the the, the contracts, based on everything. And you can't find me a single case because this would be this would be what then can be a problem. If we took land to put a strategic investor that has no deal with the with the owners, like we do in Greece, like we can do in our legislation, but we never did it. Never ever did it. When there when it was about owners, we respect for first the owners. So I don't know what really uh, people are talking about. I'll take the opportunity to, to tell you, uh, to confess that my own deep respect for Albanians living in Greece, that I've met, some of them are voters of you, 
They're very hardworking people with integrity and moral values and absolutely respect their indulgence. And uh, I accept what you say. Uh, so uh, I would also like to say that you're a leader of bold words and bold deeds. Recently in Chatham House, you said I fight for a country open and free. And also you said that I risked my life for freedom of speech. But I totally respect these statements and I know you're story and your life in art and certainly in politics in the last 30 years and more and even more but about himara it's an opportunity to ask you something else it would be quite a bold gesture towards the greeks of himara if you agreed that the teachings of the last two years of the private high school in himara would be in greek as well would you be willing to consider such a gesture I'm not uh, familiar with this uh, issue. R frankly, I'm not familiar with that. I never, it's the first time I'm hearing that, and uh, I have to check. And uh, okay, yeah, I, it's 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 all the lessons are in Greek until the last two years. In the last two years, are everything in Albanian language. That's why in the uh, until the last two years, meaning meaning until the uh, yes, the, the, the last two years of the high school until you go to the university. Uh, it's in so the, the, so the last two years of high school, there is no more Greek language, you say? Yes, it's uh, all the lessons are. La I'm not familiar with that. Albanian. Okay, I'm not familiar. I have another. I think I think learning Greek is beautiful. Learning every language is beautiful, and uh, learning no, learning the language of the neighbors is is, is fantastic. I, 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 believe I, 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 I believe it. I'm too old now to to learn Greek, but uh, I would love to. So. Uh, you can try can, if you want to. Maybe I can I can join in in in, in the course in Imara. Um, uh, I think I, I've made most of the questions, but I would like also to have another two. It, it is well documented that you have a political collaboration with Tony Blair and Alastair Campbell. Would you accept Tony Blair to act as an intermediary uh, between you and Mitsotakis to resolve the Belarus issue? But but you know there is there is. Uh, uh, you know what Tony Blair would do. He would uh, he would do what he would uh, to tell me how friendship again. He would no friendship. No, I I'm telling you, I I don't feel you know, and I'm very sincere. I don't feel any any sense of you know. Any sense of uh, why I was friend with this man? Why I trusted this man? No, I am friend with him and uh, I trust him. You know, I told you politics can be a very bad influence, and uh, sometimes politics have uh, ruined uh, very beautiful minds and great hearts. So well, that's, uh, yes, absolutely. It's not, but it's, it's, but it doesn't change. It doesn't change. It doesn't change my feelings. So okay. I know, really, literally, I'm telling you, Kyriakos to me is a modern leader and uh, what is happening now uh, is not modern is antique and uh, should not happen but i don't know exactly the motives i think i think that this is just very simple it's very simple uh, and uh, all these suspicions all this uh, conspiracy theories all this crazy you know idea that uh, himara is a is an arena where we have to confront uh, how much greeks we are or how much albanians we are all this is not good all this is too old all this is so but it does but Mr. It Prime Minister, that's a job for tony blair to to explain the situation to the different capitals and so Kyriakos. uh I don't know. I don't know if he, I don't know if you can explain to Kyriakos, but I don't think we need we need another language in the middle, you know, because uh, I speak Albanian, he speaks uh, he speaks uh, Greek, and uh, he speaks English better than me, but I speak English good enough. So we don't need an English speaker that doesn't know Albanian, doesn't know Greek, to put mm. together a Greek, a Greek and an Albanian, because I'm afraid that then. Tony will uh, will have the problem, not us. You know. By... <laughs> so. Let me ask you about a last thing, uh, totally different of Himara and Belarus. It's about the sea zones. 
In 2010, as a head of the opposition, you opposed the 2009 agreement about the seasons between Greece and Albania. Are you now willing, really willing to sign an arbitration agreement and refer the matters to Hague International Court or not? Listen, uh, this, is a, this is a good example, again, to, to explain you how I see politics. Uh, when, when this agreement was made between my predecessor and uh, was signed between my predecessor and I think it was uh, Karamalis, yes. yes. and uh, Dora signed it with, uh, with my beloved opponent, uh, uh, I had no clue because this was, uh, nobody had a clue, you know, it came out this, this news and well, everyone was okay, you know, just like, there is an agreement between Greece and Albania, what's wrong? But then some people from uh, from civil society and namely a uh, former high uh, military guy started to speak, started to write things that were disturbing. And then, you know, when there is a reason to jump against the Albanians in Greece, you find a lot of people that would do it. And in Albania, the same against Greeks, uh, uh, you find a lot of people. So the thing got very, very, uh, very poisoned and very inf inflated. And my people in the party were saying, this is a good occasion, we have to... I said, no, you know, because this is too easy. You know, if we start opening a political fight here, what are, what are we going to say? What are you going to do? But in the same time, the arguments were very concerning. So I said, listen, the only thing we can do, send it to the Constitutional Court. And the Constitutional Court, by the way, at that time, had always results that were very balanced. Or mostly uh, majority uh, on the other side. So I said, it's a balanced court. They are, they are reasonable people. So they have to enter deep in this because see... Sea agreements are not easy, and there are not many people that know about sea agreements because it's a very, it's a very, it's a niche in the in the world of uh, in the, of judicial. Yes, legal matters. So um, we sent it to the constitutional court, and the constitutional court had a nine zero nine zero. It was very yes. nine zero against it. Against yes. So and this remained an issue. This remained an issue, and when I became prime minister. I started talking, uh, and I remember I had my first discussion because I was asked to what I thought about it from um, Samaras. And then, uh, when we we had our discussions uh, with uh, with Alexis, I said to him, "Why to not go to the international court?" And uh, because this is something where you know our countries. And in this, we are similar. You may be in the European Union. We are candidates. You are ahead of us because history was more generous with you than with us. Uh, so you had you before us a long time. But in this, we are the same still. We produce more history than we can digest. And <laughs> uh, and when it comes to, to, to this thing, of course, you will be immediately a potential traitor being on the Greek side or being on the Albanian side, because uh, both sides would be accused for treason, while uh, cannot be a consensual treason of on both sides. One has to be the traitor, one has to be the perpetrator, no? So I said, let, no, 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 no. So Alexis was quite uh, cold about it. We started to have negotiations after negotiations after negotiations about it. We reached in a good in a good place, I must say. But then, uh, then uh, the poetry of Syriza, the prose of Syriza, ended, and uh, so we restarted. And I'm very, 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 very uh, satisfied that we reached this uh, agreement that we better leave it to the international court and i mean you have reached already an agreement with the greek side 
No, no, we reached, we reached in principle the agreement. The principle. agreement then to go through, so in principle, we reached the agreement. Now we need to go through the procedure. The president has to, has to uh, uh, give the new authorization for the negotiating group to start. And then we have to prepare this, there is a, there is a, something called uh, common whatever yes in the you, common arbitration agreement yes so this is something that has to come and i hope come. i hope so you're I hope, optimistic that it's going to I hope, happen i because hope that uh, some I suspicious hope. voices no, you know the voices <laughs> you know the suspicious voices that say that eddie rama prefers the strategic friendship of president erdogan uh, and President Erdogan does not want an agreement between Greece and Albania because such agreement will be used as a blueprint for a future agreement in the Aegean between Greece and Turkey. It is another uh, conspiracy theory. This is a big conspiracy theory. <laughs> uh, first of all, because when I went, when I went against the agreement uh, to the court, I never met President Erdogan, and I had no relation with anyone in Turkey because we were in opposition. First, second, uh, yes, we have a we have a, a strategic agreement with President Erdogan, but uh, I don't think that we have to choose between President Erdogan or Kyriakos Mitsotakis between Greece and Turkey. We want both. We we love both. We the fact that we don't like much each other should not be a problem for us to like both of you. And uh, I think. And so President Erdogan never ever I'm telling you this then you know it's my word against the conspiracy theorists asked me even asked me what is going on with that. Never ever. He doesn't need Albania to make his fight, I guess. So, um, uh, and as we are speaking about President Erdogan, I'm telling you, my 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 feeling is that President Erdogan is not an anti-Greek. President Erdogan is someone that you know very well, very well, at the guts when he was not yet who he is today, but he was just the prime minister, to put on the table an agreement for Cyprus. You remember mm -hmm. that. That was something very dangerous for his career back in Ankara. And he did it. And that time he was he was uh, kind of uh, I'm not using the F word, but something around it. You will find in Greek something more soft than the F word uh, by the European Union. Uh, and uh, during the during the big crisis Greece went through, I didn't see him using using the taking the opportunity to do to add to it some more because if he would like to destroy Greece or if he's in his mind to destroy Greece, yeah. he would have used uh, that moment to to uh, to make it more painful with refugees and stuff and that he didn't do it. So I never, I never really, I never saw him like a person that uh, has any bad feelings about Greece and Greek people. Of course, he has his own opinion about this uh, situation, this sea thing, and you know, uh, I'm not entering there because it's not my business to enter there. But uh, in my knowledge, the Turkish side is asking since long time to go to the international court, right? So. Uh, this is uh, this is the thing. Uh, we we are satisfied that uh, the Greek side accepted to go to the international court with us, uh, and uh, I hope they go in international court also with Turkey. And this thing is solved by a third party, which both sides yes. agree. Yes. Otherwise, otherwise, you know, we'll continue to be traitors of traitors of traitors. So, and uh, mm -hmm. this is not this is not a good idea here. Prime Minister, I would like to, to thank you for this uh, long interview. And finally, I would like to ask you, um, when do you expect your next art exhibition in Athens to take place? Uh, you know, I, I have some now in the row. And uh, 
I I wish to come back to Athens for exhibiting, and uh, I I would do it with big pleasure. But for the moment, I it's too fresh, and I I had a very good uh, feeling there, and um, it didn't really it didn't really it was not was not uh, touched by all this bullshit around it. And uh, I tell, I want just to tell to my fellows of uh, Syriza to let the art aside and to not uh, use uh, even my exhibition to tell Mitsutakis how stupid he is, because <laughs> because this is not uh, this is not a good uh, idea of fighting and uh, it's of, politics, uh, Prime Minister. It's politics, and you said before that politics is poison. Many no politics, no politics. Politics is the best thing that can happen to people when people use it to solve together things that it cannot solve alone. And this is how old Greeks saw politics. And uh, and uh, otherwise, when politics is used to to go after people, it's bad. So I love politics. Politics is without politics, uh, many things would not exist today. But you know. This is not politics. This is bullshit, you know. To 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 go after every everything to create uh, in, around everything uh, an issue for your opponent, you know, because you know, and it should be a reason Kiriakos won again, right? So I don't think that my, my exhibition would bring Syriza to power, no. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> so thank you indeed, and I thank wish you. you all the best. Um, okay, so uh, Kevin Athens. Uh, you are invited here anytime, my friend, and I would be very happy to, to anytime. And uh, you you got you got always the first uh, the first uh, knock. So whenever there is something Greece about me, you'll be the you'll be my first choice. It's a pleasure to talk with you, and also an honor. Thank you very much. Indeed. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you.